I'm on the corner of 10th and South Street in South Philly. Behind me are two food stores that are close together, but worlds apart. On one side of the street, you got Whole Foods, one of America's most new age relevant food stores, known for selling $5 avocados to hipsters and for referring to sugar as evaporated cane juice crystals. <laughs> On the other side of the street, you got Superfresh, a possibly ironic name for a food store that could be past its prime, marked by cheap prices, unstocked shelves, and a floor that hasn't been mopped since the 90s. I'm not sure if you're anything like me and my friends, but we gotta go to Whole Foods for some items, then we cross this imaginary bridge over to Superfresh. See, for me, Superfresh has always been like my Uncle Sammy. I mean, sure, he was obnoxious, and he smelled a little, and got us stolen goods for Christmas that he got from the back of a truck, but God, he was funny and full of life and, and authentic. Whereas Whole Foods, on the other hand, is kinda like that really hot girl in high school that like always dissed everybody. I mean, you know, I never understood why she wouldn't wanna hang out with me and my friends in the woods, get drunk on natural light, and sing songs off of Guns N' Roses' User Illusion 2. Now let's start with an analysis of these two stores. The floors. In Whole Foods, the floors are spotless, bordering on sterile. In Super Fresh, well, you can occasionally see something you've never seen before. In Whole Foods, items are restocked in under 10 minutes, making the whole place look flawless. In Super Fresh, items are restocked, well, whenever the hell we feel like it, motherfucker. The seafood staff. In Whole Foods, the seafood staff looks like an indie rock band. And in Super Fresh, they look like the cast of a John Waters movie. Whole Foods sells things like makeup, world music, and yoga mats. Super Fresh, you can get buzzer rings, noise putty, and fireworks. Super Fresh has flavor ice, pixie sticks, and fun dip. Whole Foods has organic chocolate and vegan peanut butter cups. Mustaches. You see a guy with a mustache in Whole Foods, he's a hipster trying to look cool. On a guy in Super Fresh, it's the real thing, baby. Eric's personality. In Whole Foods, I always feel like I have to be cool Eric. You know, very serious and environmental and hip. But in Super Fresh, I get to be regular Eric. You know, the guy who has gray hair and farts and secretly listens to Phil Collins still. You know I love you, but I just can't make this. Oh, I love you, but I'm playing for keeps. Now enough about me and the manifestations of my deeply rooted insecurities. Let's take a look at these two food stores more in depth starting with Whole Foods. Now we all know that Whole Foods is a very clean, modern grocery store that sells organic and natural food at very high prices. In fact, it's turned into a multi-billion dollar corporation. But to understand Whole Foods, you have to understand white people. Because Whole Foods has figured out that making white people feel good about what they're buying is hugely profitable. I mean, take the $5 avocado. $2 goes to the actual avocado, $2 goes to that warm and fuzzy feeling that you're helping some old farmer in Kansas named Wilbur. And a dollar goes for that outside shot at immortality. In my research on Whole Foods and white people in general, I stumbled across Sean Kelly. He's the author of a book called Shit White People Really Love. Why do white people like Whole Foods so much? Well, along with YouTube clips of The Daily Show and David Sedaris books, white people need organic food to survive. They revere an organic artichoke imported from Botswana. Why? A defining sense of self. In this way, Whole Foods is more like a drug dealer than a food merchant. It's almost guaranteed that if some Colombian drug lord started offering organic cocaine, he'd be the richest guy ever. Oh yeah, and don't forget to check out my new book, You Might Be a Hipster If. You know, according to Sean's book, organic food is actually the number one thing that white people really love. Some other notables on the list are coffee, hating corporations, expensive sandwiches, religions their parents don't belong to, having two last names, oh, and uh, divorce. Look, nothing against organic food. I mean, it's got its merits, but personally me, I like a little pesticide on my food, you know, because it gives my immune system something to practice on, which is incidentally the same reason I love taking the Greyhound bus to different places. It's like weight training for my white blood cells. In fact, the route from Baltimore to Philly, after I get back from that trip, I'm ready to kick polio's ass. Now let's turn our attention to Superfresh. 
that little store on the other side of the street living in Whole Food Shadow. Superfresh has widely been known as a dirty store with bad service where no one looks happy. In fact, if you look at Yelp.com in 2008, you can see some pretty harsh criticism from shoppers. Smells like garbage. What a dump. I hate this store. Well, that is until recently. Superfresh has just underwent a huge renovation, turning this into one of the great underdog comeback stories of any era. In fact, I'd put it right up there with David and Goliath, World War II, and Rocky III. Well, Superfresh emerged from its renovation cocoon, looking clean, sleek, and new age. In fact, it's looking a lot like Whole Foods. Superfresh now even has track lighting. I mean, shit, that's as crazy as when Dylan went electric. All right, now let's see what some of the shoppers have to say. Uh, well, I worked at Whole Foods for a while, but I shopped over at Superfresh. Both. A little bit of both. That'd be both. I usually do Superfresh. Mostly Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Neither. It's more relaxed food. The body oils. The produce. The veggies. Probably the salad bar. They got the health food, which is, you know, good, I guess. Uh, like pork. Pork. Like a veal. And like a fish. <laughs> prices. The prices. It's crazy. It's too expensive. The prices. Generic cornflakes. The cheapness okay. of it. It's really cheap. Super fresh about a lot of, lot of pork. Yeah, I like, I like pork, I like beef once in a while. That they have regular brands, junk food. It's cheap. It doesn't just seem fresh, it seems like more than fresh, almost super fresh. Bad fluorescent lighting. It's hard to find stuff. Dirty floors. Uh, it's not as nice, I'd say. And some crazy people. You never really knew it was on that bottom shelf. And there were some aisles you couldn't get your cart down. Those were the aisles from hell. I think it'll slip back. They will go back. It has not even kept up its new image. They might be able to pull through. It'll be a challenge, I'm sure. Wait, out of your fucking mind? Pixie stick. Oh, that's a tough one. Pixie sticks. I don't either one of those. Pixie sticks. Uh, like pork. Pork. Like a veal. And like a fish. All right, well, there you have it, a tale of two food stores. Only time will tell if Superfresh can keep up this new image. But for me, it's kind of disappointing to see Superfresh act like Whole Foods, sort of like it would be disappointing if Uncle Sammy showed up for Christmas wearing a North Face fleece, driving a Volvo, and listening to Fleet Foxes. Through the forest, down to your grave. So why do I care about all this, you ask? I think it's because I fear a future where everything is so homogenous. Yeah, it's clean and moral, but it's boring. I don't like the world changing without my consent, which I guess gives me a god complex. Yet another thing I have to go over with my therapist this Thursday. Don't go, 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 don't go